So we'll do the no magnifications now then. Um, and as it says, these are assorted utilities from the GNOME project. So although they're from the GNOME project, they would work with any other environment. So Baobab is a graphical directory tree analyzer. Straightforward build and install. That's finished. So um, I assume we'd be able to find this here now. Oh right, it's not called Baobab, it's called this usage analyzer. Graphical directory tree analyzer. So it's scanning the root system at the moment. So it's a bit like what I know as file light in the KDE package, KDE. Um, environment. So you can see most of the space currently taken. The whole disk has got 47.7 gigabyte used and the most space is taken up by programs in opt and there are some big packages in there followed closely by user and then sources perhaps unsurprisingly as well because that's where all the source files are located um, still got our tools are actually looks at two gigabytes in it from when we built LFS so that's quite a nice little program this text life takes up quite a lot of room I mean it could be that we um, delete this 2019 actually um, it's funny because I was thinking about I was going to do KDE next um, but because I'm running out of disk space I'm not sure how much we've got at the moment yeah there's only 14 gig left um, I was thinking about installing LibreOffice next because I think that's the biggest package that's remaining and then I think Thunderbird and Firefox are the next biggest ones I was thinking of doing them before I completely run out of this space but I suppose if push comes to shove I could delete this directory if I wanted to um, it's, it's not needed because we're using the 2021 so anyway that's obviously Baoab Baobab, how we pronounce it. It's working, so let's move on to the next one, Brazero, which is a CD burner. I've used this before in the past, but I've never really had much success with it. I um, tend to use um, K3B from the KDE project. I've uh, had more success with that. but it may be to do with the type of burner perhaps so let's get the dependencies installed so CDR tools, let's check, now I have installed a few of these but not CDR tools, right save link has ok, SourceForge Check these other ones. No, it looks like they're all right. Let's 
that's okay. Gets out of my way, I'll be able to close the tab down. CDR tools, move that to the parent directory where it belongs. Okay, looks like there's nothing to change here. <clears throat> it says it doesn't support parallel build. I've put the minus J1 in. Into the make command to override the uh, make flags. Now it's built, so let's install it. And that looks like that's complete. Let's have a go at running that one. Maybe it's not just a package. No, it's a group of tools with looks of it. So CDR tools. Next, lib dvd css. This is from 42. Just checking on install these now. So let's grab this. Did that not in uh, download? All oh, right, okay. It doesn't behave as well as the source forge, so I'll just download that again and overwrite it. Still not working. Oh, because I need to move it again. Let's build up. So, no extra configs to speak of. Let's build that. And install it. That's done. I'm not at 
that one off, loop DVD CSS. DVD plus RW tools. Okay, so there's a few sets and then a make. And then we can install it. That's done. Lib ISO burn and completion this package completes a whole CD DVD writing section. So there's no options in addition to what's already specified. We can build Doxygen. And then install it. And install the HTML. That's that package complete. So it's lib iso burn, and now should be able to build Brazero. So we've got these options here and we can install some documentation as well. And now we can make it. So that failed with the document, so that's probably a problem with the you know, uh, GTK dot program again. So we'll have to start again. And I just have to leave that option off.
So that's better. Let's install. And that's all complete. So we should be able to find this one in the applications. There it is. So it looks pretty obvious what you need to do. Tools, reject, let's see if that works. Yep, that's worked. So that all looks pretty good. Right, so I'll mark that as complete. Cheese we've already got. So we'll skip that one and move on to EOG. I have gnome. What used to be called I have gnome. Um, looks like I haven't mentioned that there at all. Maybe it's like KFC is not called Kentucky Fried Chicken anymore, just known by the initials. So let's have another go at trying to build some documentation with this package. Okay, and let's do Ninja. And install it. And install, and then we've got to update the desktop database. I'll oh, just so that it knows that EOG is the package to open images with. So I'll do sudo update desktop database, that's the MIME types. Uh, so let's just run it anyway. I don't know if we'll be able to find any images again. Um, EOG. Can't see it there. Im oh, it's just called Image Viewer. Okay. Be able to find anything again in opt text live twenty twenty dist text uh, latex um, can't remember which structure was here now. This media nine, but I think that was oh, I know it was M MWE, was it MWE? Yes, this is it. Yes, yeah, so that's can make this bigger. Okay, it doesn't Can't actually view this as its natural size by the looks of it. Show gallery and status bar. No, it doesn't look like it's capable of displaying 
images at their natural resolution. Um, oh, maybe this is what it is. Yeah, it is. That's better. Oh, but it doesn't remember it. But anyway, you can see that it's, it's obviously working. Yeah. So that's EOG. Next we've got events. I do use this occasionally. It's quite a nice PDF viewer. So we need G spell here works of it. So it says a test file if you haven't got the external hand spell which is not inside the VLFS book so we can expect that to fail. And yes indeed we did get one so let's just install it and that's that dependency done. And now we can download events. And what have we got here? So we've installed G spell, so we can leave that off. Introspection, so we'll say, enable GTK Dark World. Let's have another go. There's a chance of it failing, and I think that's all we need. Okay, let's build this. Alright, this is to do with the text live installation. Let's just take a look at the help. I think I'll leave that package off, the uh, documentation off. So let's just check documentation. Yeah, it's not building at this time. Still failing, right? Okay, let's build this from scratch then. Building P 
PDF and DVI is the DVI one that's causing it to fail. Um, let's run make anyway just to prove it. Yeah, see DVI. So we need to disable the DVI creation. Um, can I go back to the configure? No, I won't go back that far. Let me run the configure again. Yeah, so I need to disable. DVI. So disable DVI. So I'm not sure why that's failing. Um, oh, it could be this package, possibly. So let's add disable DVI. And rerun make so it says it's not going to build it. Let's see if it gets further now. Yeah, I think that has. Yeah, it has. Right, so I'm going to clean up again and start from scratch, make sure it's all clean. And I'm going to put back my enable GTK dock. So we've got the documentation again now, but we haven't got DVI. Actually, I'm not sure why it's unable to build PostScript because we've got GhostScript and that's got the PostScript tool in it. Oh, that's not good. Let's try that instead. XPS documents. Let's try enable PS. Indeed, it might even be enable GS, but it doesn't look like it's working anyway. So there could be something that. It doesn't like, not to worry. Let's just build it. Without the postscript. That's good. Let's install and that's done. So I'm just going to find some PDFs. There's quite a few there, isn't there? Oh, um, let's do minus nine. Um, let's do 
let's try that file there. So let's find events. And no doubt it's not called events here. Document viewer. Open. Can I type in paste? No, I'm not sure how. How you can enter a specific location, other locations, no, um, Just look for it manually then, so user share cups IPP tool cups IPP tool. So that looks like a big one. GC archive is not supported. That's strange. Let's try another one. Um, let's just share fonts. And Dika documentation. Right, yeah, it's loaded that one. Um, how do you make this full size? So, yeah, you can see it's rendering all sorts of foreign characters as some Cyrillic accented Roman characters and some other um, characters I don't know what sort of language they are from yeah it's, this is quite a good test document actually so yeah that's well that's what that font is capable of anyway. Um, let's try one more. Cantorel. That's nothing in there. Uh, do oh, let's try this Gent Gentium Plus, that's one I use quite a lot. Yeah, again, that looks like that's coming up nicely. Not sure this thumbnail is working properly. Or maybe it's hidden behind the toolbar, perhaps. But you can see all the characters being rendered correctly. So that's, that's all working fine. Okay, so that's events. So next package we've got is evolution. Integrated mail calendar and dress book. So there's a few extra packages here. Bugo filter, highlight and seahorse. So what's this? Uh, encryption keys. So Oh, this is a GNOME application as well, so we would have installed this one anyway. Okay. 
So we've got LDAP support. So I'll just copy and paste all the commands. So that's Seahorse installed. Now I've got a package called Highlight. Just a few commands to put in. So we've got a GUI, a QT front end to build. And it tells us here you need to make install and make install GUI now. Make install and make GUI. That's done. Uh, let's just quickly run that uh, highlight. See if there's anything nice there. So that's obviously the CLI one. And there's the GUI one. And there it is. Not sure what this does, but what does it say? Convert source code to formatted text with syntax. Oh, right, okay, so it's a editor with syntax highlighting. So if I put that into the background and extract highlight again, we should be able to look at some of this source code. Um, oh, it looks like I've left events open. Oh no, that's obviously a file that's been left behind then. Let's look for highlight. Highlight. Uh, there's the source. Let's look at the QT. Go one C plus plus file. Uh, let's get rid of that one. And there's the CPP. So yes, it is indeed. Shame, make this bigger. I'll just undocks that. It says no maximize button here. I don't know if this is part of GNOME or not. Don't know how. All right, double click it. Okay. But yeah, you can see that's that's obviously what it does. There's different themes here. Get hub source view. And eclipse. So I'm not even sure what that was on by default now. But you get the idea. on acid wasn't it that was it okay uh, 
the uh, fence was still there, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, so that's highlight and that's in chapter 11. So next we install something called BOGO filter. SourceForge, right. Right, they're giving us mirrors that are either slow or just not working at all again, so I'm going to try. Bulgaria, that's probably the closest one to me. Yep, that was quick. Do not install the recommended GSL 2.6 package in a static link to ship version we use instead, so we've got that. If you plan to change the version of your database library, no, we're not doing that, so we can run this. Um, we're not changing the default database, I'm not sure even which one it uses. Check. Uh, all right, still going. Saw those asterisks and thought it was an error. Like that's done. Uh, don't really like this failed at all, so it's okay. Let's install, and that's done. So that was on eleven as well, I think. Filter, yep. Right, so we should be okay to build evolution now.
contacts maps plugin. Okay, we've got that so we can enable the contact maps. Build a package. Now we can install it. And that's complete. So let's take a look at this one. Evolution. change settings so it looks like some sort of outlook type clone thing Thunderbirdy type clone um, won't bother changing the thing yeah like a general in fact yeah it looks more like outlook than it does uh, Thunderbird actually So yeah, I'm not bothered too much with that. It looks if it's working alright. So mark that one off. File roller next. Let's see what this is. Archive manager, okay. So there's not too many archivers on BLFS, there's quite a few old ones that are available like ARJ, ARJ. Um there's LZ, um, we've obviously got XZ, BZIP and GZIP as part of LFS, um, there's things like Zoo and C and ARC and things like that, some really old DOS ones, I think they're still available for Unix um, if you want to install them, um, certainly the archiver in um, KDE works with them, so I assume this would as well.
in fact you can see some of the formats there oh and jar of course which is just effectively a zip file anyway so we've got one we haven't got installed at the moment so let's install it Uh, let's move it so it's not too complicated to build this such as one binary so it's chapter 12 unraw um, just notice I haven't got zip marked off but I'm sure we've done that yeah I'll just cross that off Okay, so file roller. Okay, so we just use the instructions that are given. it now I right, can get this character position think this uh character problem again um let's try lang equals and gb Should we look that up? I wonder if it's something like a pound sign or something. Position 19. Right, this is what I was going to do actually is specify the UTF-8 character set so horizontal ellipsis is somewhere in there is this character that's causing a problem could be one of these here maybe Version this, I bet this is something the person's copied and it's got this character in that doesn't work.
four. Probably this hasn't got nine numbers here. But yeah, what I was going to do is to use ENGB UTF-8 because I've got that character set as well. And that should work. And indeed it has. So we just need to update these icons as it specifies here. And that's done. Should have done that as my own user, never mind. So let's look for file roller. Archive manager. Open an archive. So this should be easy. We've got plenty of archives. In sources. Let's look at let's look at a fairly big one. Let's look at Linux. Let's see how long it takes to open it. So that's not too bad. It's obviously recognised the XZ format. And yeah, we can browse it as you'd expect. So yep, yeah, that's fine. So that's file roller. Next we've got gnome calculator, GTK source fuser dependency. Build with some documentation. And run Ninja. run a test or some tests that's fine and install So that's built GTK source views in the libraries. GTK source view. Oh, which version is this? 4.4.0. Oh. Build the calculator. No extra options here, just copy and paste the commands. So pass install and that's done. So let's test. 
test that one quickly. It's actually a cool calculator and yeah, it looks pretty good. Advanced Financial Programming Keyboard Mode Okay Is that like just type it in as if you're programming I suppose Yep that would be beneficial. Okay, that's fine. So that's GNOME Calculator. We've installed GNOME Color Manager, so let's see if we can find that one. Presume it's this one. I don't know if it's that one or not. Um, okay, so we'll just skip over that and go to the disk utility. And again, these are pretty usual commands for these GNOME packages. Install. And that's done. I assume it's this one here. So you can see there's a block like partition manager. Uh, I don't it's bigger like that. So you can see the partitions. There's our root partition. what that is. So that looks fine. So next we've got something called no maps mapping application. Same build and install instructions. So let's look for that one. Maps looks quite familiar. So yeah, it looks quite good. So that looks like that's fine. And let's tidy up. So there's no maps. Next we've got no net tool. Uh, 
Right, we need a few network utilities here. Some of these I would have installed anyway as tools, for example, like nmap and trace route. Who is maybe useful more in a bigger network environment, possibly. Like this is a simple build, it's done. You can install the Who's program, the MPK parcel program, the locale files independently. Control your choice what is installed, the following commands issued as a root user. Installing this version of MPK parcel would overwrite the same command installed by expect. So um, I think I'll just install the other two. Install who is and install pause. So that's in sixteen networking utilities. In fact, these three are the last three in the Networking Utilities chapter. So, trace route. It's from SourceForge. Is in map night. Let's download that while waiting. There's Trace route. So again, simple make and Install up these commands. The trace route, the one file was installed by LFS by INET Utils is no longer relevant. The package overrides that version of the trace route and installs the main page in main chapter 8. So that's that. So mark that off. And we install nmap now, needs liblinear. That's uh, let's be downloaded. Again, these are quite simple. That's done. And this is in the general libraries. Yeah. 
so now we can install nmap so there's no extra options just configure and make So one of the tests you need to put the set in first and then make a check. That's okay. And install it now. And that's completed. To GNOME tool now, GNOME net tool, sorry. So let's download this. Installed with these commands, or built rather. And installed with just a simple make install. That's done. nosy at these. Um, I'm not sure if nmaps are graphical. Yes, it is. So that's running. I'm not sure what, what to do here. But at least the window comes up. And let's look for the net tool, network tools. It's like a kind of similar thing. It's obviously just a front end to the other programs we've just installed. Do things in a different way. So that's that. Looks fine. So cross that one off. And we've only got a few more to do for the GNOME applications. So the next one's the GNOME Power Manager. standard installation for a GNOME utility. Let's test that. That's passed and installed with Ninja. So I'm guessing this is going to be part of the setup. Let's try here. Power statistics. Okay. I don't want to power down. Let's look at the settings, see if the power options have changed here. No, it's still the same option. So it's probably those power statistics, maybe. Oh, yes, it is. Visualize consumption of laptop hardware. Right, okay. 
So let's see, power manager. So we've done the system, sorry, the screenshot. Let's see if we can get that one up and running. Screenshot. So let's try that, take a screenshot. Yeah, there it is there. So that seems to be working all right. And next we'll do is system monitor. It's GTK MM. Looks like we've got all the other dependencies. Right, so this is a different version to what we've installed before. It's version 3 we want this time. Need to run a sed to fix documentation and then just configure and make. Okay, so that has built. Um, let's run the tests. So they've all passed. Let's do a make install. And that's that package done. Installed the system monitor. So again, standard build. We can 
install with Ninja. So that's done. And again we can try this. There it is there. And here yeah, you can see all the processes running. Resources there. So I can see something's contacting the network every now and then. Not sure what that would be. Or something sending information actually. It's a little bit worrying. So whether that's the browser or not, maybe. Let me see if I can quit. No, it must be something else then. There's no thing there for network activity but yeah I'm not sure what it is something's talking to something all the time it could be this evolution maybe trying to contact um, email servers or something maybe so that's quite interesting to see that file systems yeah we know about that so we've got Still got 14 gigabytes left. I thought we'd be running out of space for some of the bigger packages, but we seem to be going not too bad actually. Okay, so let's push that away and move on to Gnome Terminal. Disable search provider. No, Michelle is not in BLFS. I thought we'd installed that actually. Yeah, we have. So obviously, it never used to be in BLFS, but it is now. So let's remove that. That was the pencil Nautilus. We've got the Nautilus file manager, so I think that's all we need to do then. Nautilus extension, yes. Search provider, yes. So that's okay, let's do make install. There's a remove there, remove terminal server service. Oh, this for system D, okay, I thought it might be something to do with this shell provider thing, and it's not, so that's okay. Right, that's that done. So let's load that up, see what it looks like. I presume it's that one. Okay, it's not running, so maybe, oh, I 
Is it taking its time? Is that just what happens when you... Yeah, something's happening. No, it's, maybe there is a problem with that shell thing then. Let's run it here, see what we get. Okay, um, right, I'll probably install it with that option then. That's rather strange if that is the cause that we've installed it from the BLFS book and yet it says it's not part of the BLFS oh unless it's the Nautilus part maybe Could be a possibility. Okay, so let's install that. Let's try running again. No, it's still failing. Okay. Let's add in without Nautilus extension as well. Strange. Um, oh, is, is it this GIO module again? Oh, the oh, that's why the environment variable language is set to UTF-8. Look how prior to starting the graphical environment. So I gather that would mean that even doing what I did before wouldn't work in gb utf8 gnome terminal doubt if that would work then no it's not right so that would involve a system change so that when the desktop manager runs and we load GNOME, so all that will be set, so I'm not going to bother um, doing anything else with this. In fact, the only thing I'm going to do is just put this back to how it was, how I had it originally, being those switches haven't made any difference at all. And I'll just stick with the terminal that I'm using, which is the XFCE terminal, I think, as I remember. checks I do remember for next time yeah XFC4 terminal okay so just run this here make Install and remove this file. Okay. So it's there if we need to use it, but we'll have to change the language. So next is GNOME tweaks. It's for tweaking GNOME settings. Oh, 
again, this is a pretty standard build. Okay, it looks frightening with the warnings and deprecation, but it's it's actually run okay. So let's install with Ninja install. That's done. So I've got running that one. So it looks like there's some niceties appearance. That's actually easier on the eye. The contrast. I think I might leave it in the dark. So there's little other icons. So there's a problem with that one. Extensions, no extensions, fonts we can set, keyboard and mouse. Application startup and login. Battery percentage. Probably not a lot of use, got no battery. A weekday on there as well. And seconds just for fun. And the week numbers on the calendar. Does that appear when you click there, does it? Yes it does. Oh, I don't see oh yes, there's the week number there. Title bars. Let's put these buttons on because I'm not used to not having them. Touch my buttons, tiling. Okay, that'll do. I have to tweak the desktop. So next we've got known weather. Again, usual installation and we can run Ninja test and install. So let's try that one out. So that seems to work fine. So just marking that off on the list. Good, got some rain coming, need that. Right, so now we can move on to Goo Char Map. Imagine that's some of some characters. Yeah, looks like it is. So let's save this.
Right, okay, so we can do this and enable some documentation. And make So let's look for that one. Character map. Yep, so that's could be quite useful. So that's fine. So the next package we've got, we've already installed Network Manager Applets. Let's have a look at that. Let's work. Manage Applet. Must be that little thing there, I imagine. Right, yeah, it's not working probably because I didn't completely install it correctly, so that's fine. Um, so the next one, Seahorse, we've already installed as well. Managing encryption keys, I don't know if we'll be able to run anything here. Yes, we can. System Trust, OpenSSH. Okay, so there's no keys, probably because I haven't actually connected to anything to create anything. So the last package we've got in the GNOME is this Vinagra or Vinagra and this is a VNC client for GNOME so I need this GTK VNC first of all Install it using Ninja and that's done. Okay, so we just copy and paste the commands that are here. Install it. And that's that one done. So let's try and find that one now. Yep, there it is there. So I haven't got anything to connect to, so it's not going to be much use me running this. So that's that. So that's the end of the um, GNOME installation and all its files.